So one of the questions that I get asked a lot is, are there rattlesnakes in Minnesota? Are there rattlesnakes in Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois? And how far north do rattlesnakes actually get? And the answer is yes, there are rattlesnakes in Minnesota. There's rattlesnakes in Wisconsin, in Illinois, and in Iowa. As a matter of fact, there are, I think Maine is the only state in the United States that doesn't have a species of rattlesnake. There's actually three species of rattlesnakes that go as far north into Canada. So I'm gonna spend the day with Joe Atchison from JSA Reptiles and Ryan Dolan, and we're going to answer the question that yes, rattlesnakes actually do live in Minnesota. We have the timber rattlesnake here, and we're gonna hit the Mississippi River Bluffs to show you guys just how awesome our rattlesnakes actually are here in Minnesota. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. So it's been a great morning so far. It took us a couple of hours to get down here and within that couple of hours, I got pulled over for a speeding ticket and uh, then we hit a deer and screwed up my entire front end of my vehicle. <sighs> but it's all worth it if we can find what we're looking for down here. And before we hit those bluffs, it's about 8 a.m. The air is still pretty chilly out here. It's maybe in the 60s, but that sun is shining. And when you have that scenario where you have cool air temperatures, but the sun is radiating and heating that ground surface, that's when the snakes are gonna come out and bask. Right there is a fox snake. He is wedged in the rocks. Coming when you're ready. Are you gonna go in for the catch? I'm gonna play. Mr. Ryan Dolan is going in for the catch. It's better to just let him go than to actually... Yeah, he's right there too. Oh, wait. Yeah, he's pretty wedged in there. All right, well, I'm sure we'll find another one. I don't want to hurt the snake. There you go, check it out. Yep, look at that. There's little fo There's our first fox snake of the day. Cute, cute little tail. All right, well, it's so much more important to us to just let the snake go than to try to get him out of this wall and actually injure the snake. So we're gonna move on down the wall. All right, this is the reason why I love this wall. Look at this guy, he's just completely stretched out. The morning sun is hitting this wall, the air is still chilly, and this is the perfect scenario to find these fox snakes. Joe, you wanna do the honors on this one, or? Sure. Joe right. Atchison, ladies and gentlemen, from JSA Reptiles, going in for the easiest know. catch ever. <laughs> I feel like I should have acted that one up a little bit more. I just picked him right up. <laughs> Look at this beauty. Man. Rattle. Yep. <laughs> Look at him buzz his tail. So, like rattlesnakes, most snakes will actually buzz their tail like that when they're nervous. And it's just that rattlesnakes have evolved a rattle that makes a sound. But that's a nervous reaction that most snakes will do, is they will rattle their tail like that. But man, this guy is flawless. Look at this beauty. If you guys remember, a little while ago, I filmed a video on fox snakes right here, where I suggested that a much better name for these snakes would be the northern rat snake because of their range. They are only found in the northern Midwest. And the reason why they're called fox snakes is because the person who first described them thought that their musk smelled like fox dens and gave them the name fox snake. Yeah, that's cool, but I still think to this day that a much better name for these snakes would be the northern rat snake. Rat snake. They are in the rat snake family, and I've been musked by hundreds of these. I have not once ever thought that they smell like fox dens. All right, Joe caught him. I get to do the release right where he was. There you go, buddy. <laughs> right into the crack. Joe, what have you found? A little race runner. Look at that little dude. So Minnesota actually has three species of lizards. Two of them are skinks, and this is the third one. These are the rarest species of lizards that are found in Minnesota. These guys are only active for about two to three months out of the year, and they can only be found down here in the southeast corner of Minnesota. We've been flipping rocks here, nothing's there. You were gonna flip that monster, there's just, gonna be something under it. Just cause there's gonna be a garter snake under it. Let's go. Whoa, how did you know he was there? Come here, buddy. Hey, wait, wait, where are you going? Hey, come here, come here. Hey, wait, wait, no, no, over here. Hey, come, wait, stop, no, go this way. Hey, over here. All right, now you actually have a snake. Yes. Your first one of the day. 
<laughs> what you got there? I got a garter snake. Yes, you do. Look at this little guy. So this is an eastern garter snake. So this is one of the most common snakes that you're going to find here in Minnesota. Just did a video on these last week. These are my favorite snakes. This one is actually a really big one. This is a big female and gnarly, surly. That, that means she likes you. Little tiny cute droplets, love bites. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Yeah, so fierce. Like, yeah, so fierce. So aside from the garter snakes, this habitat is also the home to a garter snake relative, the northern water snake. And right over there, we should be able to find a ton of them here. All right, Ryan, what have you tackled? Ah, so right here, we got a northern water snake. They got some really cool reds to them. Oh some man, look at that belly. belly. Man, of all the northern water snakes I've ever seen, look at this belly. Here, keep that mouth away from me. Aim that mouth towards you. You can see that he's got look a little bit of damage that. on his side too. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, something tried to take a bite out of him right there, but usually they have these really nice half moon markings on their belly, which is one of the diagnostic features of a northern water snake. You're okay, but you're okay. yeah, yeah, he's getting a little surly there. Look at your thumb. Better your thumb than my thumb, but I'm still <laughs> looking at that belly here. But that is one of the nicest bellies I've ever seen in a northern water snake. Do you hear that? I'm talking about you. Over there, we're probably going to find some more northern water snakes. So we're going to let this guy go. Let your thumb heal, which it probably won't because these guys have an anticoagulant in their saliva. So when they bite you, you now have that anticoagulant in your bloodstream. You are going to bleed and bleed and bleed. That is why I... I'm so generous in giving you the opportunity to catch the snake over me. You know, with how much this is bleeding, this might be the last time you guys ever see me, so can it's I, been nice. If you die, can I have your crusty geckos? Uh, yeah. Sweet. I suppose. You hear that? Kill him. Kill him. Look at this though. I mean, I could reach out and pet this garter snake. That is amazing. You're obviously sunning yourself. We're just gonna leave you alone to get your sunbathing in. We've already found basically everything that we can find here. Um, so I say we start climbing bluffs and start looking for what we came down here for. There's another water snake over there in front of you. Oh, there's another one there. So there's a water snake here. There's a water snake over here. Yeah, that is a pretty one. Mm -hmm. Now, if you pick that up and die, can I have your ball pythons? Of course. Kill them! <laughs> Kill them! <laughs> Get them! In this spot, we found some really cool snakes and lizards, but we still have not found what we came all the way down here to southeastern Minnesota to find, and that is the timber rattlesnake. And for those, we have to go to another spot down here because those are not found in the lowlands. Those are found way up in the bluffs. So from here, we climb. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house and I use them exclusively for all my insect-eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. Alright, here we go. What's that saying? The journey of a thousand miles starts with a single something? I don't remember. Look at this. This is amazing. <laughs> Look at that cliff. And then all the way down there is our car. Well, my car, not ours. It's all mine. I've even paid for it myself. But that's where the car is. We climbed all this way, all the way up there. And I have all this left to negotiate. And the really bad thing is, look at this. You can't even grab onto these because every single one of these bushes has really sharp teeth. Lots of thorns. And if you slip and grab one of these, you're going to rip all the skin off your hand. So you really got to be a mountain goat up here. But man, worth it? Always. Always. Yeah, they know. yeah, look at that. The vultures showed up. <laughs> <laughs> they know we're going to die up here. Oh, are you free handling a rattlesnake? What'd you get? Oh, what a beautiful little bull snake. All right, so up here on these prairies where the rattlesnakes live, 
you will find these really awesome bull snakes. We were just finding these on the prairie areas, literally five hours drive north of here. We were finding these. These are a wide ranging species here in Minnesota, but these guys will actually hibernate with the rattlesnakes. They don't bother each other. They make really good roommates. And as a matter of fact, if you look right here, there's this big hole in the ground with this big crevice that goes all the way down. And I bet you that's where they are hibernating. One of the many hibernaclums around here. And that is where we just found we, this is where Ryan, just found this bull snake. See, I gave you credit. I'm working on redeeming myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But interestingly enough, this is the largest non-venomous snake found in Minnesota. The timber rattlesnakes up here are the largest snakes in Minnesota, and of course, the largest venomous snakes in Minnesota. So we are just about to find the two largest snakes in Minnesota with this find right here. All right, so Ryan has vindicated himself with a bull snake find, but we still haven't found a timber. Did you just find a timber? Yeah. Scratch that. We just found a timber. Let's go. Just his rattle just went here. And is he still there? He's, I think I can get him here. Yeah, let's see if we can get him out of there. We must take a look. I basically turned. He must he must have been sitting right here. Right there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I just caught a glance. Is this rock flippable? I don't think so. So, but I might end up catching him in the process. To be honest, I, even if it is flippable, I don't want to destroy that microhabitat just but to get a glimpse of the snake. So by microhabitats, what I mean by that is that when a rock lays flat on the ground, an entire ecosystem can eventually form under that rock, depending on how long that rock has been sitting there. Up here, these rocks have been sitting here forever. So I know that there is an entire ecosystem used by multiple species of insects and mammals and reptiles that live in that microhabitat, in that ecosystem under these rocks. Not only that, but there's something called a moisture seal that forms under those rocks that holds moisture within that ecosystem. So when I come out here and I see a rock that I know has a timber under it, I'm still not gonna flip that rock because I know that there's an entire ecosystem that I am inadvertently going to destroy as soon as I flip that rock. And I'm not willing to do that just to see a timber rattlesnake. We have lots of opportunities to find a timber rattlesnake out in the open without having to destroy an entire habitat in order to see one. So when you see rocks, especially ones that have been there for a long time and when you're out herping, consider the damage that you could be causing simply by flipping that rock. Hey guys, look at this. Oh wow, look at this. This whole rock is covered in goat turds. I don't know if you want a photo of that or not. Goat turds. Okay, check it out. That's what we've been waiting to find. There's a timber wedged right in that crevice right there, and I don't have my hook. The boys do. We will have to wait till they get up here. But look at that. There's another one over there. Holy crap, we are winning rattlesnakes right now. That one's in the open. I, I can't tell if that's one or two. I'm gonna leave them alone. I'm gonna go down here and see Ryan's. I'm gonna go way away so I don't spook those, which means I'm going right through the thorns. Ow, 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 ow. Oh yeah, he's dirty, holy crap. Yeah, his color is blending perfectly. There we go. I think he sees us. Oh, 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 no. oh. His head was already in there. No. And listen to this, I mean, you can still hear him buzzing away in there. He'll come back out. Yeah, all right, so let's go up here and take a look at these two because that's either one big one or that's a couple of them up here. All right, we gotta go, th oh, he, let's go around this way because I don't wanna spook him coming that way. So we gotta go through these thorns here. Ow, 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 ow. So this one 
or two is sitting right in that crevice and look at how red this one is though all right that is two that's the way to do it nicely done all right so the other one went back in that's okay we got this one out and this one was the more red one anyway. Just look at how red these guys are up look here. The tail. This is what we find look at that's that. been endemic to this area, has been this level of, in, and more so, of this red. Look at that. What is the, here, let me move around you. I don't want you to have to position for my camera, but I want to see the scoots. Look at that. This one's coming this way. Yep, yeah, yeah, I see his head. Man, really red scoots too. All right, let's see what he'll uh, he'll pose nicely for us. Okay, you ready? Yeah. What kind of pose you want? Um, what kind of pose? Um, see if he'll do blue steel. So some of these guys will sit there and coil, buzz their butts, carry on. Look at how just gentle and chill. So look at those scales. Look at how heavily keeled those scales are. And what a keel is, is it's a little raised indentation in the middle of the scale. The reason why is because as we saw, they live in those rocky outcroppings over there and those heavily keeled scales aid in gripping that rock and holding them in place in these crevices, especially on these steep slopes up here. We are going to let this guy go right back on his own, right back to the crevice that we found him in. But man, Yes, there it is. Minnesota does in fact have rattlesnakes. And that's the only one we have left. That is the timber rattlesnake. And look at that. Right back into the crevice where we caught it. Such an amazing snake. Oh, there we go, there we go. Come on. There we go, little baby timber. Look at that. He's probably hmm, a yearling at this size. Maybe even two. Huh? Maybe even two. Yes. Yeah, but look at that. They're already starting to get that red coloration. Up until 1989, the better part of the 20th century, there was a bounty on these snakes. And most of Minnesota's rattlesnake population was completely decimated. Well, now, thanks to conservation efforts, these snakes are making a strong comeback here in Minnesota. And every time I see a baby rattlesnake like that, I know that the future looks pretty bright for these rattlesnakes out here. Every baby that I see tells me that there's going to be another generation and their numbers will continue to grow and expand band and hopefully we will get them back to one day to their historical numbers. So the answer to the question is yes, rattlesnakes do live in Minnesota. They live in Wisconsin, in Iowa, in Illinois. As a matter of fact, almost every state in the United States has a species of resident rattlesnake. And again, there are three species that go further north than this all the way into Canada. These snakes are incredibly adaptive and they're incredible survivors. They are, without a doubt, one of the snakes that I have the most respect for. So guys, real quick, I just want to thank each and every one of my Patreon supporters. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter of this channel and support reptile education, please check out that link below. For as little as $3 a month, you can get Rattle On swag, early access to my videos, and so much more. That link is in the description description below, please consider supporting this channel by becoming a Patreon supporter. And I just want to give a real quick thanks to Joe Atchison from JSA Reptiles and Ryan Dolan from Ryan's Reptile Outpost for joining me on this expedition. It's so much fun to get out in the field with those guys. So anyway guys, until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on. <laughs>